Hi, I'm Kerry Grinkmeyer with Best of Us Investors. Uh, we're a tribe of individuals who are working together to help each other make good investment decisions, learn how to keep more of what we make by uh, understanding our tax code, and number three, building family wealth so we can influence the lives of those who follow us. Back in June, uh, Gabe, one of our tribe members, this is a book we've written about how the tribe works, came to me and said, hey, Carrie, there's a stock you need to take a look at. They're involved in a lawsuit with uh, with Google, and it has some tremendous potential. I researched it, some of the other tribe members researched it. We got a lawyer in our tribe, Nick, involved in it. He basically made some statements like, uh, Google's really on the hook for this. And so we bought into it in June, and we bought in somewhere in the neighborhood of $3 a share. And I've added to it as I've gone on. And then I kind of went cold on it and said, you know, I'm not a lawyer. I really don't know much about this. So uh, I've just kind of held on it. I'm up about 100% on it now. But I saw a uh, Seeking Alpha article um, yeah, it's it's entitled Netlist just greatly increased their potential settlement, and and it's it's uh, it's written by Jacob Braun, and so I contacted J Jacob and said, Jacob, look, uh, you seem to have an understanding of this. I'm not a lawyer. He's he's really not a lawyer. He's tech oriented. I said, uh, would you be willing to come on to my channel? and uh, explain what you understand relative to Netlist and let our tribe know if we're in a strong position and give us some time of a time frame as to when this is all going to come to, to the foreground and what's what we can expect to happen. So I sat down just a few minutes ago with Jacob and uh, he opened my eyes. I had no idea what I own. This is kind of like opening a drawer and saying, what's this? How long have I had this? And then searching it and finding out this is worth a lot of money, a lot more than I thought it was. But let me let Jacob explain that to you. First, I got to tell you, I'm not your financial advisor. And then we're going to jump right in to Jacob of Seeking Alpha and uh, I would really suggest you find him on Seeking Alpha and you follow him and, and you get access to Seeking Alpha's premium and um, make this a part of, of your daily activity. Just a second here. Best of Us Investors presents Kerry Griegmeier. Carry again with uh, Best of Us Investors. I, I've got a real privilege today. I'm, I'm going to talk to a Seeking Alpha um, author who wrote a very interesting article on uh, Netlist. Now, we have been involved in Netlist for basically here at Best of Us Investors since June when Gabe brought it to our attention. Gabe is a member of our tribe and uh, said this is a substantial lawsuit and Google has some tremendous exposure that could affect the price of um, of Netlist substantially. I personally and a lot of a lot of you got in about three dollars per share. I think my exact price was three oh six, and we're already up over a hundred percent. But we've been on a roller coaster ride since June, um, and and I think it's in part because. Uh, Reddit has come to it, gone away from it, and I think a lot of people see it as an opportunity to, to, to create, because it's thinly traded, to manipulate and move the price. So I wanted to, I reached out um, to uh, Jacob and asked him if he would be willing to come on and share his knowledge. And I think the end objective, Jacob, of our uh, interview here is what do you think the potential price on this is? But let's hold that until the end to make them watch the whole video. OK, For sure. <laughs> All right. Tell me a little bit about your background in this and, and how you found it 
and then walk me through what you know about the Samsung settlements and anything else that you can you think can bring some light to uh, to our group. For sure. So, um, so I'm a I'm a mathematics major at university, and I currently work in um, software engineering. And so I, I have a background in technology, so I kind of try to stay up to date on the latest technology things. And Netlist, as we'll talk about later, I'm sure, is has such critical um, technology patterns that it, it came across my radar and I was able to find it, researched it more, and thought it was a very interesting opportunity. Um, as far as as far as like my background, I've I've always been into technology. I I actually did a talk on Bitcoin over seven years ago before it was very big. Wow. So, you know, I've been I've been on the current um, things and I think Netlist will be the next one that will uh, really explode and be a big, uh, big winner. So you're you're not interested in it purely from the the lawsuit point of view. You think they have some nuts and bolts in there that that are going to be very influential. Help me understand that. Yeah, for sure. So Netlist has over 50 patents um, that they have right now. And including, they just recently got a patent for mobile processing. Um, so right now, they've been primarily a server company. So this whole lawsuit with Google is over the server technology, but they're they're opening into uh, mobile processing. Um, and really, the biggest thing that they're doing is um, it's called Hyperdim. Basically, it's a it's similar to Intel's Optane that they tried a few years ago, but it's basically a super fast, energy efficient um, version of RAM. And the key to it, and the reason why it would be such a winner is it can create the same processing power that currently a server um, piece of RAM would use, but it does it at a third of the cost of energy. And servers are very energy intensive. So if you think about first for the environmental impact that you wouldn't use as much server, um, much energy for a server farm, which is just an energy drain. And second, um, it would really save costs to a company just because of the energy savings. So what is the application of that? Uh, I just, in uh, you, my son contacted me uh, just the other day, and he said he is going to start buying some machines to mine Bitcoin. And I know one of the issues there is energy use, heat, and, and use of electricity. Is that an application? Um, I, I currently do not know like the exact answer to that. I know specifically that the what they're trying for is server farms. I know what the issue with okay. Bitcoins is the GPUs and stuff. So I'm assuming this could eventually be down the line applied to that. But mainly they're specifically going for server farms. So when you say server farms, these are the big, huge football field that have servers in that Amazon and Google and Microsoft store all our data in. Yes, exactly. Okay, so that's who their potential customer is, and one of those happens to be the company that they're suing. <laughs> yes. Okay, so to walk me through then your understand. So, so again, what drew you to this is not the lawsuit. This just happened to be a side benefit. Okay, let's For talk sure. about where do you think or do you do you care to get into based on the technology and the patents they have? What do you think the put put the Google thing aside? What's the potential and the timeline for Netlist price to skyrocket? Yeah. yeah so uh, it's an interesting thing because right now they have very good technology. They many people think they have multiple seminal patents, which are industry changing patents. But the problem with it is they're kind of being blackballed by the industry, in my opinion, because they're suing all the big players. If you're being sued by someone, you're not going to go and buy yeah. a product or license from them. So really, they need to clean up the lawsuits, which will obviously be um, a large um, cash inflow if they go well. But I think that we're talking two to three years in a multi-billion dollar market cap. So. That would give, because basically, Jacob, what you just have lit me up to, it was my plan, once this lawsuit is settled, to sell, to get away from it and say, okay, they had their run, uh, now I want to cash in and uh, 
because again, I did not have the knowledge you just shared with me. So you think it's a long hold? Yeah. Um, personally, I think how I'll play it is when, uh, if big lawsuits were to come about, I'll sell a portion of my shares to take profits at the at that time, and then let a portion ride. Because it's not just the future technology. Remember, um, they have this. For example, the nine one two patent. The nine one two patent has been fully um, vetted by the the court system. And that patent, the only thing that's being questioned is if if Google is being is going to have to pay um, licensing fees going back, or if every company is just going to have to pay licensing fees going forward. So at the very least, you have the 912 patent, which will be a solid patent where people are going to license it for the future. So that's again future cash potential, future profit potentials. Let's focus then on on. First of all, the Samsung settlement. As a result of that, as I understand what you said in your article, um, Samsung is going to have to pay them. No, you you referred to an Intel patent. What is Samsung going to have to pay uh, Netlist for their patent infringement? Yeah, so it, this case is actually a little interesting and a little tricky because really Samsung never is not being sued for patent infringement right now, and that's the key. So basically what the lawsuit was over was a breach of contract. So they had a contract going back four or five years. And the the ruling recently, which I wrote the article, was they officially voided the contract. Okay. So what that did was um, – what that did was no, – so right now um, in the coming weeks, they have a, a jury decision on the cash um, prize from the – contract and the contract breaking right but the contract was only originally worth 60 million so that we're not expecting that settlement to be pretty big mm -hmm. but the reason why this is so big is because without that contract they were using their technology including the 912 patent and selling it to all these other companies without giving them a licensing so now if you go back because they don't have the contract now they're open to a lawsuit which many people expect netless to have to open soon for patent infringement uh, the interesting thing is to that will be is most likely um, I don't think they'll ever do that lawsuit because they'll include it in the settlement for the original contract breach. Okay, so you don't think they'll do that settlement. What do you think the the net effect then of the Samsung suit is going to be? Yeah, so really, uh, I expect really basically everything is being weighted on by the um, the judgment um sorry the judgment in november 10th on claim 16 um and that's but that's between google and that list and the reason for that is that's the decision so basically basically like how that to explain that is the 912 patent is fully vetted but they've made a few tweaks to it throughout the years so google's um right google's claim is they don't they're not liable for all the past years before 2020 because there, there was a few tweaks but now this is claiming oh you are liable so the basically if that's decided um in netless's favor which i think it will be because there's precedent uh based on a there's prior precedent in the court of federal appeals that favors netless um then google will be on the hook for over 10 years uh which is which is a lot better but at the very least they're they're going to be on the the hook for licensing going forward probably because the pad has been fully vetted. But how that affects the Samsung cases, Samsung's not going to make a settlement until that is decided because otherwise they don't have to pay going back. But if that is decided that they do, then Netless will go make the settlement with the things going back. So really, everything depends on this November tenth case. Either way, we're in a good um, situation. But one situation would be incredible. I think. On the November 10th, um, well, sorry, it's not a decision. It's the first hearing is November 10th. Okay. With um, with the trial would be next summer. But um, based on that lawsuit, will determine uh, really the, the, the outcome of these cases. One is going forward, one is going forward and going back. And yeah. so with Samsung, going back to Samsung, sorry, uh, it really, it would, they would be, they would uh well, netless would sue them for the use of their technology because they didn't have a contract and what's interesting about that is in court documents already lenovo and google have bought 
from Samsung, this technology that they thought was licensed. And they've asked for Samsung to pay for damages in any lawsuit regarding the breach of contract now that there is considered patent infringement. So Google and Lenovo are basically asking Samsung to take the blow for them for using the technology because Samsung was the one who broke the contract. Okay, so you, you're you expecting not particularly a decision November the 10th, but a kind of the start of the process. And then yes. sometime after the first of the year, maybe this whole thing coming to fruition, coming to, to yeah. a conclusion. So the no, there's an intervening, intervening rights hearing on November 10th. Right. This, and what's interesting is is by the same judge um, that was involved in the 2009 case where they did a, a, a random search of Google server and found Netlist technology in the servers. So we so, got the same judge. Same judge. And as I understand it, he has basically said, uh, Netlist and Google, get this settled before you bring it back to me. And yes. that has not happened. And yes. now he's stepping back in on November the 10th and say, probably going to say, did you get it settled? Do you have an agreement? Or are we going to proceed with this? For sure. And I think I think what will happen, uh, this is purely opinion. I think they need to make a decision on the uh, on the intervening intervening rights for Claim 16 because that's huge, that's billions of dollars because it's uh, going back. Right. And then once that is decided, right away you'll see settlements from all these companies. If when when they when they decide that the courts have already made the decision that we are liable, they will get serious and and come to a settlement and will probably never get back to court. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Okay. All right. All right. That's pretty exciting. Um, you have enlightened me tremendously. And, and what I what I really like about it is I have always said I if if Gabe had brought it in hindsight, I wouldn't have gotten involved in this because it's a legal matter. It's not really an investment matter or but you've just br turned the light on and said, yes, it is. This is a viable company that has some potential in the future on its own right but has a huge potential of settlement that will then, when, once that's, and that might be a part of the settlement, might it not? That, that Google says, look, uh, we'll give you X amount of dollars, and then we'll also sign up for the use of this new energy efficient server business that yeah. you have. Yeah, I definitely think that'll be a part of it. If you look at XK, SK Hynix's settlement, so, a lot of people are disappointed with that settlement. It was for about $60 million. But the reason they did it was because it gave them cash to be able to go and fund these other lawsuits. But that part of that settlement was the opening of the whole patent portfolio to SK to Hynix in a licensing deal. And I assume, like you were saying, very similarly, all these other companies will have a similar deal, just for much more money. So with that being said, short term, um, do you expect a bump on November the 10th? Or shortly thereafter, uh, whenever whatever happens in that courtroom is made public? Yeah, I, I definitely think that you'll see some some reaction because it's so big. Really, that's the last bear case on the Google on the Google um, claim is that, well, they're not going to be liable going back. Mm -hmm. Like on my on my on my article, people can comment. And um, that's the last thing that people are commenting. Well, like, I don't really trust it fully because um, of the claim 16. Um, but I expected it to be a probably a judgment by the end of the year because you, the court's trying to clear their docket. Okay. And I think it's very typical to try to clear everything out by the end of the year. Okay. Would you be comfortable uh, projecting what the price of Netlist is going to be in the near future? What It's right now at about seven. It actually took... Uh, um, went up, I think, from about five to seven uh, just in the last month or not even that in the last couple of weeks and that the recent climb was based on was what i wrote my article was on was the judge officially voided samsung's contract which opens them up to yeah. past liability okay but as far as as far as price um i don't want to necessarily give a zach specifics so i'll give a range but um for every billion dollars in a settlement the stock price will go up over four dollars 
just just purely on the cash, not not based on momentum, not based on um, anything else. So just one billion dollars settlement is over four dollars in in value of cash value per share. So if you say if you say well let's uh, what about two billion dollar um, uh, settlement, which I think it will be much higher. But what about a two billion dollar settlement? Well, if you think about that. That would be you doubled your share price, right. um, which is really good. As far as for the Google case, I'm expecting honestly no less than a $10 billion settlement, but probably I think a lot more because think about this. This was, um, for example, in 2009, the judge did a random uh, random survey of Google ser- or servers. Every single one of them was found to have netless technology. That was in 2009. This court has, this case has been fought since 2000, um, 2009 until now. Why would Google fight so hard for this if it was, just, if it wasn't that big of a, a number? Because Google, okay. you gotta remember, is a one and a half trillion dollar company. They have hundreds of billion dollars of cash on hand. This isn't that big of a deal <laughs> to them to be able to throw out a few billion. So this is gonna be, I mean, everything's pointing to it be 10 plus billion dollar settlement. That's $40. A share. Yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> okay, Jacob. <laughs> okay. Anything else you want to add? Yeah. I mean, I would, the biggest thing I would add is that this is not guaranteed at all. Um, while it looks very promising, there's so many factors that can influence saying. Um, I think the biggest one is the claim 16. If claim 16 goes positively and they rule that Google is liable, you'll see a massive jump in um, the stock price because otherwise anything is just for licensing going forward. So really that's the biggest thing. If you're an investor, the biggest thing looking forward that you need to watch is the claim 16 interviewing rights here on November 10th and what happens thereafter. Um, but other than that, uh, Netless, yeah, they have a very promising patent portfolio that with uh, all this cash, with all these deals could potentially help them, like I said, continue to grow as a company. Right. Your relationship with um, Seeking Alpha, you're an independent author. Um, I, I, that would give me that you and I have a similar situation. I'm an independent YouTube producer. Um I got to believe your one of your goals is to get followers. Sure. Okay. So give us a pitch. Um, I, I, I would, I would guess that this video is going to be seen eventually by some 20,000 people. Uh, I'd like to think that I had something to do with, with, uh, building your following. Uh, tell me a little bit more about what you deal in, what you, what you uh, write about and how my viewers can follow you. Yeah, for sure. So I, I, just, I primarily write about biotech and, uh, and technology. I try to avoid uh, like main, main companies, you know, your Googles, your, your big ones. So I've fr- primarily um, written about three companies, Cassava Sciences, which recently had a big jump, um, Immune Bio, which has a very promising uh, drug portfolio, and then Netlist. Um, I'll, I'll definitely ask more as I, um, I continue to find more, but really I just try to find undercovered stocks that are sort of, um, I, I, I describe them as um, like value plays that are like lottery plays. So they, they have they have very big uh, op- upsides, um, but they're undervalued for whatever reason. For example, cassava sciences is undervalued because there's never been a successful, a, a truly successful drug in the Alzheimer's space. Um, Netless is undervalued because it is a David versus Goliath story. They, they, many people don't think they can win. Um, so I take those odds because okay. I feel like that's the best way to make huge returns on a single stock. Granted, again, it's very risky, but that's what I write about because I find those to be interesting. Okay, are you personally invested in those stocks yourself? I'm personally invested in all three of them. Okay, all right, excellent. Uh, I would ask you, um, will you come back? Make can we talk maybe again after November the tenth? Yeah, for sure. I'd love to come back. Thank you so much for having me. It was oh, a great time. this is cool. This is cool. I think I I don't know that I have seen anybody do something exactly like this. Uh, I have uh, communicated with the CEO of uh, Netlist and I have asked him if we could do this. And um, it he lives in Israel and we have different 
time frames and we haven't been so you're the first one that we have put together on this and i hope it is a a part of best of us investors in the future because what i i i jacob i tell people that first of all i believe that we in the united states or in the whole world we have a unique uh opportunity to invest in people smarter than us you know i'm not another jeff bezos i'm not another sergey bream or i'm not another elon musk but i can invest in them and in your case you have you're you're digging you're digging where nobody else is looking and i think the 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 real value of what i'm trying to bring to to my viewers is i can't beat wall street at their game i can't but if I can get where they're not looking, where they literally can't, they can't direct their investors to net list because the risk is too high. And so they won't. They will stay with, you know, Bank of America and uh, Caterpillar and things of that nature. This, But this is where the big money is made. You got to understand the risk. You got to make good investment decisions. Then I preach, you got to understand our tax code so that you keep more of what you make. You need to own NetList in your IRA where if you do make big profits, you don't have short term capital gains. Okay? That's how you keep more of what you make. And then the other thing, and I would say this to you, I think you told me you're what, 19 years old? Yes. You have the ability to make a huge difference in the lives of the people who follow you. You're not married, correct? No. Okay, so you don't have any children. But if you continue to do what you're doing, you can become a multimillionaire. And then you can pass that on to your children and you can change your bloodline's place in the world. And I think that is just an enormous possibility. I just wish I was where you are when I was 19 years old. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Jacob. Um, I will be in touch. I promise you, you will become a regular uh, on our channel. And we'll build some following for you and some following for Seeking Alpha. Because this is the quality of information we as investors need for sure thank you so much for having me okay thank you okay this this was eye-opening uh i personally as i mentioned in the video i was prepared once once this came to settlement which i thought would be somewhere in march of next year i'd dump it and i'd never have anything to do with it but as Jacob shared with you, they've got some 50 patents and, and they are in, in some areas that are going to be real important. As he talked about uh, how, uh, servers, at something about uh, using less electricity at servers, I don't really understand that. But Jacob, th I, th I thank you. Uh, if you're right, I'm going to make a lot of money with this settlement. And so is my tribe members. And thank you, Gabe, for putting this onto this. And thank you, Nick, for reassuring me that I was in the right place at the right time. And Jacob, you're going to be back on this station on a regular basis, particularly uh, maybe a little next week after the dust settles from the, the, the November 10th uh, situation. So that's what I want best of us investors to be for you. I want it to be a place you can come on a daily basis and get some information you're not getting anywhere else. And I will take it on as my challenge to for you to make that happen. Now, if you want to get involved in this even deeper, and that's like just yesterday, we had a, a talk about our investments in our, in our our, really, our investment was, our, our talk was about the video I'm going to do for Monday, and that is dead money. We invest in, in stocks like this and biotech, which uh, Jacob, I'm going to enroll his help on. And they are companies that 
he said it's kind of like playing the lottery, but an educated uh, vest, uh, an investment in the lottery that are going to pay you big, big dividends, not dividends, but big return on investment in the future. That's what we're about. We do not want to play the daily game with Wall Street. We'll lose at that eventually. Eventually, they'll take our money. It's just like going to Las Vegas. When you walk into that palace, you know somebody's paying for that palace. It's the people walking out without any money. That's the same as in Wall Street. Okay, I think this is fantastic. I'm excited about it. Put your com uh, comments below and do us a favor and do yourself a favor and give us a thumbs up and, and subscribe and join and support this website if it brings value to you. You just click that little thing down below that says join. Talk to you again soon.